channels of emotive thought. Most of the things that I do these days are on the occasion of the studio. I go in with very little preparation, just throw ideas out, and you might make little experiments, sort of get, say, look, here's 50 seconds, play 10 notes in that 50 seconds, and don't repeat the same note twice. Now, that sounds like an awful easy thing to do. Well, it is. So you must understand, I mean, it sounds incredibly indulgent, and indeed it is, because what I'm trying to do is mould uh, the traditional methods of rock and roll with newer processes, trying to find a, a new form of language. Do you think you have influence on their thinking? No. And that's what I'm trying to do with the new music, is find a new language, which doesn't, it isn't that doesn't have that kind of image influence. Do you think people uh, will understand that language? Yes. And because I think people, in, especially in the city context, think in fragments. The city person will see a milk advert in the street and be thinking, no, what's gonna, what are we going to have for dinner? Boy getting knocked down by a bus, crashed against a wall, that kind of thing. So he's thinking in terms of maybe a thousand different images at any given time. And uh, the language that Brian and I are sort of producing is a language that can relate to that way of thinking. We live within this manifested idea of what should be formed, and what we try and keep out of our existence is chaos which is a very real part of our lives. And our refusal to accept chaos as being integral to our existence, I think, has been one of the greatest mistakes as a civilization that we've made. My work as an artist has always been to do with transition. The nature and study of change in our particular era is most important because never in our history has there been such a rapid curve of change since the Industrial Revolution. I'm a fairly good...